Hey guys, CB Super here. Today's DaVinci Resolve 16 tutorial is on adding paint effects to video. It's actually pretty easy to do inside DaVinci Resolve. It only takes a couple of nodes. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do is create a new project. And inside of DaVinci Resolve 16, we're going to go ahead and start off in the Edit tab. Under the Master Bin section, go ahead and right click, add a new bin, title it Footage. And in the window pane just to the right of that, go ahead and right click and import media. Pick something that you just want to add some kind of uh, effect to. Go ahead and double click that and put that in your viewer there. Go ahead and tap on the eye for the endpoint. Let it play just a little bit. And then hit O for the out point. Go ahead and grab it and drop it into the timeline. Make sure that your playhead is actually touching that clip. Now just jump on over to the Fusion tab. So first thing you'll notice is that we have two nodes down here. We have a media in and we have a media out node. So the media in is gonna be your video and the media out is gonna be the finished product of your video. And everything you put in between here is what's gonna change your video. So in order to do this effect, I'm gonna need a couple nodes. I'm gonna need a background node, which you can find either up here and just drag it down, put it somewhere in the center. I'm gonna need a paint node, which again, you can find right over here. And I can drop that just underneath that. And I'm also gonna need a merge node, which you can find here as well. You can also do the hotkey of shift spacebar, and that'll pop up your tool select. And then you can actually type in, say, soft glow. And you'll notice that it's already selected on that. And all you have to do is hit the enter key or hit add. And now you'll have a soft glow. That's just, that'll give you a node too. And that's going to be a really fast way to speed up your workflow. So I'm going to give myself just a little bit of room. And then I'm going to start actually putting these nodes together. You're going to need something to paint. And what we're going to paint is actually the background. Using the right mouse button, I can grab this little gray square and I can bring it down and I can set it onto the paint node. Let go and it pops up two options, either input or effect mask. Well, this isn't gonna be a mask, this is gonna be the input. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click on the input and that now connects them. I'm gonna do the same thing with the paint node to the merge node. The only difference is once I do that, it's gonna ask me, do I want it on the background, foreground, or an effect mask? Since this is gonna go on top of another piece of footage, I want it to be in the foreground. I, now I can connect the media in to the merge node and then back to the media out. So I can go ahead and disconnect here, right click, hold, and drop it onto the merge node. And this time I wanna click on background because it's gonna be behind all of the paint effects. Using my right mouse button again, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the media out. And that's just gonna be going to the input. Okay, so I have a black screen here on the media out. One thing I have to do is I have to actually go to the background, click on the background, and come over to where the alpha slider is and slide it all the way down to zero. Now, you'll notice that I can actually see the footage and I can still paint on it. Command Z to undo that. So my plan is, as she walks by the light post, there's gonna be a light that swirls up around this post and ends up in that light at the top there. Okay, so we can paint right now. As long as we click on this paint node, we can go ahead and start painting. Control Z or Command Z to get rid of that. But first, let's talk really quickly about some of these brush controls. Okay, as we click on brush control, we can change the shape of the brush. You can change the size, the softness, you can change the brush shape. Uh, you can also come down here and you can change the brush color. So if I want a red, I can change it to a red. I think on this effect, I'm actually gonna change it to, yeah, you know what, let's do like a white, a nice bright white, that'll work. And I'm actually gonna want the size just to be a little bit smaller, right about there. I can also come down here to stroke duration. So right now, stroke duration is set at one frame. Now, if I want it to, to last several frames, I could go ahead and slide it over to say 30 frames. Now, you'll notice when I play, through it stays for 30 frames and then it'll disappear so that's stroke duration and for today we're just gonna leave it at one so let's talk a little bit about this nodes down here um, one thing we can do is we can left click select all of the nodes together and we can move them on the timeline uh, we of course can move these nodes around and they will stay like infinitely connected you can have nodes that are doing nothing you can have several nodes that are not connected and then say if I wanna connect them later, I can. Say I click on the paint 
and I paint this line here, I can actually go ahead and click over to the soft glow, have an input, put this back over at the merge for foreground, and now I have kind of a lightsaberish glow on my line. Now, we're gonna use that later, but we actually are not gonna use it right now, just because it slows down the computer a little bit. It'll be a little bit easier to do all the animation without having a glow effect that the computer will have to churn through. Okay, so you'll notice that I have this um, line and I've done too many different things now. And, and if I start control Z and I might delete something that I don't really want. So there is an actual eraser here you can use and you can turn up the size to make it a little bit easier to erase. And just like if you were in Photoshop or some other program, you can just erase whatever lines you want, but just be careful because that will actually erase anything that you've created. Now it only erase stuff that is on that specific frame it won't erase things that are on other frames unless it would the frame duration allowed that specific line or that specific paint effect to continue being on there. Just something to keep in mind. So we're going to actually start this animation here at the very bottom. We're going to start it at the end of the clip. We're going to go ahead and go back, click off the eraser, back over to the color tab, a little bit smaller, and that should work. Um, if I want to move this around, I'm just going to hold down the middle mouse button. And if I want to increase the size, I can hold down command and I can turn the, uh, the mouse wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and start down here at the bottom. If you want to go to the very beginning of your clip, all you have to do is hit this little arrow and it'll go to the very first frame of this clip. Now in order to move a frame at a time, all I have to do is actually press the arrow left or the arrow right. So let's just get started. So we have our brush effect. I'm going to go ahead and start off and I'm just going to paint this on with the mouse. I also have a Wycom tablet and if I was doing anything for a long period of time, I probably would switch to the Wycom tablet, but this is going to be pretty simple. So we're going to go ahead and just start by making somewhat of a base here. better it's gonna look but sometimes the sloppier it is the more interesting it actually looks um, not always but sometimes all right so we're just kind of kind of back out here and we're gonna try and preview this kind of looks like it's it's it initially starts going up the pole uh, and makes its way into the light all right so that's um, that's in a nutshell, basically, just how to actually animate. But let's do a couple more things to make it look just a little bit better. Um, one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and connect this soft glow. I'm gonna hit, go to the input, and then again, right click and into the merge. interesting and we can play around with uh, all the parameters 
If you want, you can even come into the merge node and you can kind of blend it. And if you go to all the way to zero, it's just going to disappear because now you've just blended it to the point where you can't even see it. But say if you go somewhere in between, you're just going to see a little bit of it, almost like it's like a ghost or something. So one thing about the merge node that's nice is that it has these apply modes. Just like in Photoshop where you could change to screen or dissolve or multiply, you can do the same thing within DaVinci. So if I wanted to screen this on there and then play it, it's going to look a little different than if I was to multiply it, right? Because multiply generally is making things darker. You can also overlay it if it's too strong. And that's interesting. It looks kind of like a little light worm. But I think we're going to go back to normal and we're just going to go ahead and render this out and see how it looks. So you can go back over to the edit tab and you'll notice that your effect has actually been updated right here in the timeline. Now you may have to play through this a couple times in order to fully render it. I'm on about a four year MacBook and it takes a little while for me to render things. So let's go ahead and go to the delivery tab and just render it out real quick. 